Today's video is the top 10 things to know before you go boondocking for the first time. Welcome to Roman Your Home. My name's Randy and this is Jamie. We're going to tell you all the things we learned in our first week of boondocking so that you don't make the same mistakes. For those of you who aren't familiar with boondocking, it's RVing without any hookups. This takes a lot of research and work to get your RV ready and you'll need to find out where you are allowed to boondock. For us, we were excited to stay for free on Bureau of Land Management land, otherwise known as public lands. We'll tell you at the end of this video how you can find out where that is. Okay, it's our first time on BLM. We see a site up ahead. Let's see how it goes. Let's show you where we're gonna be. start things off, number one is check your weather. As you can see, we're in some weather right now. We have a storm coming our way, but nothing for us to worry about. We just want to make sure that you guys have a uh, weather radio or just, just to be safe, make sure you're not out here in crazy weather. So as you can see, we are in the middle of nowhere with a storm coming. We knew it was just a typical thunderstorm, so we weren't concerned. Because you're off the grid and most likely you won't have too many people to warn you like you would have in an RV park, it's really important to have a weather radio. Even without any power, you'll still be able to get emergency weather warnings with your weather radio. It's also important to have a plan to escape to a safe place if needed. I have my sunglasses on, not because it's sunny, but to keep the sand out of my contacts. It is really flowing. Wow. <laughs> it is getting pretty windy. We might, might have to take this inside. Yeah. Idea. <laughs> Number two, know the watts you use. This means know what equipment you need to run and how many watts are used to run them. Things like your refrigerator, coffee maker, TV lights, laptop, hair dryer, you get the point. So many things we use daily without even thinking about how much power they use. When you're running your power with solar and battery using your inverter or using your generator, it's critical to know what all you can safely run. You might be surprised that you won't be able to run certain things like your microwave, your TV, and your AC, depending on what size inverter, battery, solar, and generator that you have. Here's some of the things we did to get ready to boondock. We added a soft start to our AC. This lowers the starting watts to allow you to run your AC with a generator. You need to look into what size your AC is and what size generator you will need for your RV to ensure this will work for you. We switched out our lead acid battery with a 200 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery. We already have 190 watts of solar on our roof and we have a 160 watt solar suitcase that plugs into the side of our RV. Our fridge is 12 volt that runs off our battery which is charged by our solar. We bought a 750 watt EcoFlow solar generator which we'll discuss more later. We have water bags to fill up our fresh water tank so we didn't have to travel with the full tank. We decided on a 2500 watt dual fuel champion portable inverter generator. Number three, test your setup. We cannot stress this enough. Test everything in a safe environment where you don't need anything and you're right next to full hookups. Take a few days and practice in an RV park or at home and see if things run as planned. 
Make sure your battery or generator is big enough to run the things that you want it to, like your AC or your fridge. Test to see how much fresh water you use each day, how quickly you fill the black tank and the gray tank. Test and practice before you try it for real. We did not and we totally regret it. <laughs> we did a ton of research and asked our viewers with our similar setup what they used. We planned and did everything we thought was right but never took the time to actually test it and make sure it worked. We got to a spot in Texas with the triple digit heat outside and inside the RV and we got all set up only to learn that the generator did not work for us. We would have to get a bigger generator or link two together to run our AC despite what so many people told us. So we had to pack back up and sleep in a hotel for the night before we headed north into cooler temps. Learn from our mistakes. Also learn how to tell how much power you are using and what your battery life is. We have a Go Power controller and found out quickly this is not what you need. We need to get something like a Victron controller or a Victron shunt to be able to see our consumption and what our battery life is. We are still searching and trying to figure out what we need. We also learned that the 160 watt solar suitcase for the side of our RV does not have a controller, so we can't use it. We can only use it to charge our EcoFlow, but not to add to the solar of our RV. Number four, learn about your fridge. We have a 12 volt fridge that runs off our battery that's charged with our solar. We bought our RV specifically for this feature, so we could boondock thinking this was the best choice. We quickly learned that the 12 volt fridge uses a ton of battery consumption and we were constantly worried about waking up to a dead battery. One night, Randy had to go out in the middle of the night and sit in the Jeep while it ran to charge up our battery for about an hour so that our fridge would still have power in the morning. It was so stressful. I mean, there's boondocking etiquette and you shouldn't be running your generator between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. We had to learn how to conserve our power so the battery could just focus on the fridge. We used our battery powered camp lights instead of our RV lights. We used our solar generator to plug in our chargers, fan, and laptop so we didn't need to run our inverter. We also learned what the converter does and the fact that you don't have to have it on when you're not hooked up to shore power. We had that on and it was draining our battery because it was just running for nothing. We wish we had a propane fridge now. Comment below and tell us what fridge you have for boondocking and what you prefer. We'd love to know your thoughts. Number five, get a solar generator. This is a lifesaver. Seriously, this completely saved us so that we can actually stay in our boondocking site for the week despite not having adequate battery, solar, or generator. Our EcoFlow is 750 watts and we also bought the optional 160 watt solar suitcase that can charge it. It charges on shore power in about an hour and we use it all day long. We had our Starlink plugged into it, our laptop, cell phones, and some other things. It saved us so much money by not having to go to the RV park down the street. We paid about 900 for it, but we use it when we overland and it has more than paid for itself. Number six, learn how to conserve. This goes for conserving your power so your battery doesn't die quickly, so your refrigerator isn't always running, conserving fresh water, conserving water going down the gray tank, conserving how much trash you have, so many things that you might not have thought about. Here are some things we did to conserve our water. Keep a bowl in each sink to collect the water to prevent it from going down into your gray tank. You can use this water for flushing your toilet. Then we had specially marked water bags and use them to fill our gray water so we can take them to the dump station without worrying about our gray tank getting full too quickly. To conserve our fresh water, we learned how to just use a very small stream of water out of the faucets. This makes a huge difference. We also have a water miser that conserves water back into the fresh water tank until it gets hot. We also turn off the water except to rinse quickly. To conserve electricity, we used our solar generator as mentioned. We used our camp lights at night. This way we didn't need to use any of our battery power for lighting the RV. To save our fridge power, we learned quickly to not open it after 5 p.m. Nope, it's after five. <laughs> we also did not put warm items in at night or it would run all night when there was no sun to charge our battery. No filling the ice trays at night or putting water bottles into the fridge at night. 
To conserve trash, we packed all of our trash into plastic shopping bags and tied them when full and took them with us to throw away wherever there was public trash, like at the gas station or grocery store. This helped a lot. Number seven, find out how to get water and where to dump. Compendium will help you find dump stations and potable water. Be sure to find out where these are in proximity to where you want to go and how much the cost is. We went to a KOA and they charged $20 to use their dump station and we ended up dumping for free at a Maverick gas station. Doing your research will help you save time and money. Most RV parks have dump stations you can use or you can check out campgrounds, national parks, and gas stations. Number eight, safety and security. First off, I was concerned that I would be scared to stay in the middle of nowhere. I was so relieved to find out that it was not scary at all. It felt so safe and secure. The people that you see are there for the same reason you are. And people who are out to harm people are not typically going to drive to the middle of nowhere to search for people to steal from or hurt. That would be much easier for them to target busy cities. We do lock up whatever we can to deter anyone who may be tempted to steal. We have rope locks on everything, a hitch lock for the RV, and a lock on our cargo carrier, and always keep our truck locked. We have a camera that we can use on the outside to watch the RV door inside view. We can bring the camera inside to watch Cooper too. However, we never left Cooper by himself when we were boondocking. We just didn't feel comfortable. We also have a Waggle pet monitor to watch the temperature inside the RV while we're gone. There's times that we take Cooper with us and leave him in the truck when it's cool enough. We bring the waggle with us in our truck to monitor the temperature inside. We love it because it uses its own cell service so that you can use it without Wi-Fi. You may not have cell service where you boondock. For emergencies, you will need a backup plan like a satellite phone or you can use a Starlink like we do. So you can have high speed internet in the middle of nowhere which enables you to use Wi-Fi calling. Number nine, speaking of Starlink, this was a total game changer for us. Starlink works in the middle of nowhere, even where you don't have cell service. It does not run off the cell towers. It runs off satellites and there's a lot of them. We have been to so many places where we have zero cell coverage. However, we have high speed internet to work remotely, including being in Teams meetings or on Zoom. Plus, like we mentioned the bonus of getting Wi-Fi calling, it is so worth it for us. Number 10, know how to find your campsite. You may be wondering where do you find Bureau of Land Management or public land that allows you to camp free. We love the Campania map for a lot of things, but mostly use our OnX app that shows you clearly where the BLM land is and what land is privately owned, where the trails are, etc. We hope you've learned some things to help make your first time boondocking a success. Be sure to check out the links in the description to visit our Amazon store for the products we use and talked about in this video. Comment below and tell us your boondocking tips and how we can make it easier next time or tell us something that might have surprised you. Even with all the mistakes we made and had to learn things the hard way, we had an awesome time and we can't wait to do it again, but smarter next time. Each time we boondock, it gets easier and easier and we learn a lot more. It is so awesome to be able to have the comforts of your RV in the middle of nowhere with the most beautiful views for free. Just had steaks, sauteed onions. What do you think? <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> We have really enjoyed our stay here. Cooper's loved it. This mountain view is gorgeous. They did a good job picking out the site. And we have a perfect sunset for our last night here. It has been such a great week, our first week of boondocking. We've learned a lot had some challenges but overall it's been awesome we're so thankful for this amazing opportunity and don't take it for granted one second
definitely gonna miss this mountain. Thank you so much for watching. We know your time is valuable and for you to spend your time with us means so much to us. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and we would love it if you would subscribe. It helps us get noticed by YouTube so that they can show our videos to more people. We put a lot of time into making these videos to help you and we'd really appreciate your help as well. We are so excited to take you with us next week to Mesa Verde National Park. It was way better than we ever expected. See, See you next, next week. week. Bye. Get the feet up on the dash and the calling open road. Road trip classics on the radio. With your hand tied in mine, there's no such thing as time. Now we can go anywhere you want to go. Okay, let me do that again. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Lost it. Yep. <laughs> yep. I know. As soon as I said, I'm like, yep. <laughs> yep. Let me show you. He said, yep again. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh... Yep. <laughs>